Hi, how are you? This is Damaris Maria Grossman, and today we're talking about contraindications of GLP-1, kind of like the more serious stuff that people talk about, and why I would most probably deny someone being a candidate for the program. So first off would be um, inflammation of the pancreas, they call pancreatitis. Now, people that get this kind of um, side effect, I will tell you why they get it, and most people, they should stop using the medication if they get it. But people that get it are because one, they're drinking, two, meaning alcohol, drinking alcohol in excess, two, they are um, also having severe, like a lot of fried foods and overeating in the processed foods. And why is it? Because now the body has to overwork and the pancreas is now overworked and it is causing an inflammatory response. So the patient is now trying to understand why do I have this pancreatitis? Well, it's because your body cannot process the, this junk alcohol and foods and still cause you and still make you lose weight. So you're gonna have some sort of side effects. There's gonna be things that are gonna come up. So that's big. And if it becomes se se severe, you're gonna have to be off the medication. The next one is gallstones. So if you still have your gallbladder, um, the same concept is, is if you're eating fried foods, a lot of excess carbs, you can get um, issues with gallstones. And it's the same concept is because the body needs to process this. And because it may have been slowed down, you may not have been hydrating, you're not eating the right portions, you can end up with an excess of stones and which then can cause an inflammatory response. So that's why diet and overall um, eating and nutrition are a big part of the equation. This is not a one size fits all, and this doesn't just go, hey, let's just do this one thing. That's why you really need to be guided by a medical professional that understands what these side effects are and how you can help yourself. So, and if someone has any previous health histories um, that would not make them a candidate, they wouldn't be on this medication. The another one would be hypoglycemia, which means low blood sugar. So these medications are used for diabetic and weight loss. And when you look at diabetes, it, they always kind of call it diabetes. So diabetes and obesity, they kind of come hand in hand a lot of the time. So, um, but it can in turn lower your blood sugar because that is part of its job. Um, it will, <clears throat> But the main thing is you don't want it to go so low that you're feeling fatigued and dizzy. So that is one of the uh, beginning side effects of that fatigue and dizziness may be because you're hypoglycemic. Now to reverse this or to help you out, you kind of will try to get some fruit in you, um, a juice if needed, or some sort of protein to help um, spike that sugar back up. If you notice you are feeling fatigued, you're going to go and sit down and kind of give yourself some rest. Um, Another one would be kidney issues. I would not be giving this medication to any person that has a history of kidney issues, kidney failure, or has, you know, one kidney. This would not be a medication I would be giving to anyone, but if they were in kidney failure or had any severe reaction, they would not be on this. Also, again, with liver, if there was any elevated liver um, test or they had a history of some sort of liver um, disease, they would not be a candidate. Um, allergic reactions. Just like any medication, there are individuals that have allergic reactions to something. Anyone can have an allergic reaction. You have to realize when you take something, it could have a rash or you could have some more serious, like an anaphylactic, a swelling or hives or something of um, a severest nature. And obviously you can't take that medication, so that wouldn't be recommended. Some people see they have made changes in vision. I have not seen that, but it's in contraindication, so I, you know, I'm talking about it. Um, but I guess also you have to think of, it is a diabetic medication. There is some um, neuro, um, visual and blurriness for some diabetics. So maybe that person is a pre-diabetic and they may have had some history. There could have been already micro um, um, vascular uh, decretion, um, uh, delineation, and you know something could have been coming up. That could have been it. But they're saying that's a possibility. And, you, and if that was even to come up, the patient would not be on the medication and some depression. So what happens is, um, from what I have been reading in the research, is depression is not that the patient can be on the medication if they were depressed. What happens is, is if they're not followed by a provider, is that there is the, you lose your appetite. 
So the joy in some foods that you used to get, you may not get that joy. But that does not mind, mean that you can't socialize and be out with your friends and your family and be out and about. That just means that you need to find other ways in your socialization to maybe lessen the amount of food that you eat, lessen the amount of alcohol that you drink, and be present with your family and friends, but not need as much. Now, and then being okay and content with the feeling of not overeating and still enjoying the moments and the times that you have. So that depression may come from just the different feeling of what food has controlled you, because it is actually overeating and that such can be an addiction for individuals. Not everybody, but some. And that's why you still have to be um, followed by a healthcare provider. <clears throat> you have any questions for me? Of course, reach out at any time and I'd be glad to help. The next video is going to be on some myths that you hear about GLP-1 medications.